Hi, I'm Elena, and this is Business Casual, your guide to dressing Europe. Here we unpack all things e-commerce, logistics, innovation, and Europe for fashion and lifestyle. In this episode, we talk about pink slippers, inbound distribution centers, and robots. And my guest today is Thomas Wolf, head of intro logistics engineering at Zalando. Welcome, Thomas. Yes, hello, Elena. I have a quick question for you. Mm. When it comes to footwear, what do you prefer, fancy or comfortable? Comfortable. Um, prepared for running the extra mile. Good. <laughs> but what we see from consumers, actually, that you can do both fancy and comfortable, as we see with these lovely pastel pink slippers from a very famous German brand. And if uh, these are fulfilled with Zeos Logistics or on Zolando, then uh, they could actually be handled by a specific shoe picking robot. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. It's really likely. We have some robots in our warehouses working side by side with our warehouse workers and they pick it with an arm out of the rack. Zolando is a player who's very much focused on fashion and lifestyle. So it sounds like the processes and the technology are specialized in that as well. Can you tell me more about Zolando's network? The special focus in our network is the flexibility. So we have 12 fulfillment centers, 20 return centers, and they are capable to cover seasonalities, weather changes, and of course, uh, trends. And so we can adjust our operations every day um, towards what, what happens. And it sounds extremely relevant to fashion, things like yes, weather changes, seasonality and, and trends. So how do you actually ensure that flexibility within the network? It's ensured by the structure of our network. So, for example, we have our inbound distribution center. This is the contact point for our brands and partners. So they bring their articles to these inbound distribution centers. We integrate them in our network and then we are able to distribute it where the demand is. We also distribute it in this way that every item is on the same access time, so there's no item discrimination, so our customers are free to order what they want. So basically not every item is stored in the fulfillment center. We ensure that uh, the majority of the assortment is stored close to the customer and we replenish it from the inbound distribution centers as we need it in the different markets. And let's imagine that uh, these pink slippers are fulfilled with Zios. Can you highlight a couple of processes uh, worth mentioning? So in some of our fulfillment centers, we have an automated inbound where these shoes will be processed and they get a unique label. Then they will be automatically sorted to the uh, um, storage location within the warehouse. This could be an automated shuttle. Yes. Um, stores and also retrieves the item automatically. It could be also sent to the picking area where our shoes are picked by the robots next to our colleagues from the warehouses. The special shoe picking robots. Yeah, the shoe picking robots. And from this onwards, then when the customer orders, these uh, lovely shoes will be uh, consolidated with other items of this order and will be transported via conveyors through the warehouse or via large-scale uh, pouch sorters. So these are sorter systems with rails on going through huge circles and lanes. It's looking like if you if you ever visited a laundry <laughs> service, uh, then you see this technology. Was uh, that the inspiration behind the uh, it, it, it was, yes. Back in the okay. years, it was the inspiration for this. And this will be then consolidated on a pack station uh, where one of our colleagues will take care of this package. And then there is again automation with large-scale outbound sorters sorting your parcel to the respective destination. And we talked about the physical um, aspect of fulfillment centers with the automation technologies and robots. What about the brain behind this whole operation? Yeah, the, the, the brain behind is an, is an own operation system called Salos. It's basically orchestrating all this uh, material flow and it has some really good algorithms and of course also AI components to optimize every process every day on and on constantly. It does sound like a fashion specific process like that could really drive efficiencies within our industry. Thanks for unpacking this topic with me today, Thomas. Thanks for having me. And that's a wrap. 
Thanks for tuning in to Business Casual. Keep dressing Europe and we'll see you soon.